changes in the sun, changes in the magnetic field, changes in our world. I'm Alex Hansberry. It is July 9th, 2017. It's seemingly getting hotter by the day here in southwest Colorado. Looking forward to the monsoon rains any time now. And that is our discussion, the sun. And it's something that I've been intentionally looking at for over 10 years, not literally looking straight at the sun, of course, but researching the sun, being uh, mystified by the sun, the sun and its cycles and their impact over mankind. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information at a time as some of these additional new reports come out. Scientists fear grid failures during solar minimum. As our sun's activity slows and the star gets quieter, scientists' fears of solar minimum are coming to the forefront. It isn't the lack of activity that is terrifying to those who study the sun. It's what happened next that worries them all. There would be nothing any of us could do if the sun's activity decreases to the point that it causes the outermost atmospheric layer to collapse. No amount of taxation in the name of global warming will save anyone on Earth from this outcome. But first, scientists have to worry about the sun reaching solar minimum and the possibility of losing the outermost layer of the atmosphere thanks to rapid cooling. Solar minimum is when the sun goes through a cycle of minimal activity, and right now it's on the verge of reaching this point. Our sun will near solar minimum in about 2019 or 2020. Unlike the name suggests, this lack of solar activity could cause an outermost layer of the atmosphere called the thermosphere to contract, and it's not entirely clear what the effects of this could be on our planet. I'm going to pause. Think about that. And think about that carefully. Because we're not just talking about weather. We're talking about changes in human behavior. I would even suspect other paranormal events. The roughly 11 year cycle of the sun is reaching its low point, and soon. This means less energy is going to be released from our star in the form of solar flares, but it will mean we have solar winds to contend with. Professor quoted here at the University of Birmingham says the next solar minimum could be in about two years. But before the sun, before then, the sun is expected to unleash significantly more radiation towards Earth. She said that this cycle could mean the fundamental change in the nature of the sun's magnetic dynamo may be in progress. Now, I've said for years years ago that I suspect that the impacts of the next solar cycle are what we're going into, be it the solar minimum going into the maximum of the 2020s. It's going to be a powerful punch. And it seems world transforming. And there's not a doubt in my mind. For several years now, I've seen what I feel I see is a period in time in which they want to distract the masses by a world war conflict. And it's a manufactured event, but the question is, what are they trying to distract humanity from? It's interesting just coming across this information and the two stars colliding in 2022. And that event in and of itself, that type of a supernova, what kind of impact could that have on our reality, not just this planet, but this solar system or universe? She isn't the only scientist who believes that this could amount to doom and gloom. Her theory is backed up by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory Daily Snaps, which have shown a spotless sun for 44 days in a row. But there have been subtle, mild geomagnetic storms in the last few weeks and months. It isn't entirely clear why low solar activity causes our thermosphere to collapse or what it might be doing to our planet without having any effect on the sun cycle, which will ebb and flow. Man-made global warming took some blame. Back in 2008 and 9, 
when the sun was going through the same cycle, climate change alarmists claimed that global warming was adding to the cooling and contracting in the upper layer of our atmosphere. This is not how it used to be, and the rotation rate of the sun has slowed down a bit at latitudes around 60 degrees. Not many people are prepared for a massive power grid failure, thanks to the th sun's cycle. But it's a growing concern among many preppers, and scientists are now validating that anxiety. And very few people are prepared with the food, the water that they need, and more than guns, uh, the morality, the ethical lifestyle uh, that I think will bring them good luck. In fact, I think there's a lot of people that are facing some negative karma. Just to add some spiritual commentary to this, we're not victims. I've always believed since I was a young child that I would see major changes in my life. I interpret as a, a humbling of our civilization. It's interesting to see a lot of things come up to a head in the next few years. Uh, one more bit of information. Soar minimums are known to spark a lot of cosmic ray activity that can penetrate our atmosphere. These cosmic beams cause air showers of particles. Uh, when they hit our atmosphere, they pose a health hazard to astronauts and a single stray cosmic ray could cause a satellite to malfunction as well as wiping out communication systems a solar blast could down power grids so one final thing i'll keep this short and sweet come back with more there is a health risk i believe with people of certain genetics um i've talked about this area mostly that i'm in being um, fairly wealthy the county mostly white, a lot of investment coming from out of state. Some of these people are able to buy very large plots of acres. And I heard from someone else who works in one of these areas that the cancer rates are very high for th some of the wealthy men that have moved to this particular area. So there are 7,000 feet, 8,000 feet. Uh, there is a health risk that comes with living at higher elevation. Melatonin can play a role in whether or not someone is um, inclined to have skin cancer or not. I do have something here. I do have mild things here, but I do think that in some ways I will and may fare better than others. Uh, these are things to take in mind if you're considering relocating to a particular area or altitude, or whether it's going to be a significant health risk. And not to get too speculative, but as the heavens open up, if you will, the layers of our atmosphere, could there be information during that period that we can access because we've already lived through solar minimums and when i look back at the solar minimum that we went into after the invasion of iraq and afghanistan those were some very productive focused years in my life when i started outside the box tv for the very first time around this time 11 12 years ago and i contemplate that often and how to reset my focus in this current cycle because I've been feeling this reset internally as I've gone from the traveling experience during most all the solar, ma solar maximum, more travel, solar maximum, more moving. That's what I've come to see in my own life. The solar minimum, things slowing down. I'd like to see the civil unrest calm down a little bit. I'd like to see a little more balancing of the brains. And so when we talk about solar maximum, when we talk about solar minimum in closing, there is a positive and a negative uh, understanding of what those cycles bring, the maximum portion and the minimum, just like a yin and a yang. I'm Alex Ansari signing off for July 9th, 2017.